Hello there, welcome to the Comets collaborative project of Etresa Global and Ukrainian Media. I am Olena Solodovnikova, and it's great pleasure for me to welcome Evgen Chely, a lawyer and the president of the NGO Ukraine 2015. Hello, Evgen. Hello, how are you? Not bad. How are you? Okay, thank you. Uh, today we talk about uh, big money which belongs to the aggressor country. The assets of uh, Russia's central bank frozen by the Western countries are alone worth uh, 2060 billion euros. The West is actively discussing the transfer of at least a percentage of frozen Russian assets to Ukraine. Uh, could you please uh, remind us when and by whom these assets were frozen? So, so currently what is being discussed is this, as you know, uh, when uh, the Russia uh, started its uh, military invasion uh, and uh, ultimately uh, all out war, uh, which was coined by correctly by the president of the United States and by various countries as a genocide. Uh, Western authorities have frozen Russian assets abroad, and uh, uh, currently just the uh, assets of the Russia Central Bank alone uh, that are frozen uh, abroad uh, total uh, over 260 billion euros. And in 2023, the financial return or the revenues on just a portion of those assets in just one central securities depository was about 4.4 billion euros. So this we're talking as you correctly started with very important amounts of dollars. And I say that Western authorities are currently examining various scenarios, how to now tap into those frozen assets. And three uh, scenarios are being analyzed one is to tax the frozen assets. The second one is to unfreeze the yearly financial return of the frozen assets. And the third one uh, is uh, to use the frozen assets as collateral for loans uh, to Ukraine. So those are the, the issues that are being debated today. Uh, from my perspective, uh, all of the uh, uh, various avenues uh, that are being explored uh, uh, ultimately do not uh, want to immediately tap into the frozen assets themselves. So we're talking about revenues, we're talking about taxing the assets, but not the full amount of the assets. My, from my perspective, I think that the international community and the countries that have frozen those assets should be aware that on March 16, 2022, the International Court of Justice in The Hague has rendered an order uh, whereby a judgment, an interim judgment, stating that the Russian Federation shall immediately suspend uh, the military operations that it commenced uh, in Ukraine on February 24, 2022. And uh, since then, Russia has uh, uh, violated this order blatantly as well as the various calls by the international communities, resolutions uh, from international bodies for Russia to stop its genocidal war against Ukraine. Russia has defiantly uh, violated all those calls uh, include and has committed acts of genocide, including the forceful deportation of Ukrainian children to Russia, for which the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant against Russia's president uh, on March 17, 2023. So what I'm saying is that you take into consideration all of these resolutions and the judgment, and the Western authorities should now uh, uh, give Russia a deadline, a specific deadline, a reasonable deadline to seize its military invasion of Ukraine, withdraw all its military from all Ukrainian territories, return to Ukraine all prisoners of war, and all Ukrainian children that were forcibly deported to Russia. And if Russia fails to comply with this deadline, the uh, uh, predetermined amount of frozen assets would be forfeited daily and transferred to Ukraine. From my perspective, that would be 
the uh, uh, maximizing the value of those frozen assets. It would also give teeth to the, to the judgment uh, that was rendered by the International Court and the various resolutions and put uh, pressure on Russia to stop its genocidal war against Ukraine. That, from my, from my perspective, would be compliant both with Article 51 of the United Nations uh, Charter, which allows for collective self-defense, and uh, of the resolution of the UN General Assembly of 2001 uh, uh, that, uh, that was titled Responsibility of States for Internationally Wrongful Acts. Uh, and I think that that gives enough uh, ammunition, legal ammunition, and uh, for, for the uh, Western authorities that have frozen those assets uh, to give such a deadline on Russia to force uh, uh, Russia to stop its invasion of Ukraine and to indemnify Ukraine with Russian uh, assets uh, for the damages that it, has, that it has caused and that the Prime Minister of Ukraine uh, with uh, the World Bank has uh, uh, established uh, a on a preliminary basis to surpass uh, 500 billion euros. Exactly. Uh, but um, I wanted to clarify that uh, main economic argument against the confiscation, the resource of Russian Central Bank, was it could be lead to financial destabilization in the world. Would it really be the case? I don't think so. I think that we have all the uh, tools uh, that are necessary to ensure uh, that there is compliance with an international order. You cannot have uh, a, a country like Russia blatantly disregarding the UN Charter, blatantly disregarding all its international obligations, blatantly committing acts of genocide without suffering the consequences of such uh, 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 conduct. Uh, and I think that uh, the Russia should rather think uh, that its actions are destabilizing uh, the international order and not those uh, actions that are recommended in order to indemnify Ukraine and to stop Russia from violating the international order. I completely agree. Since Russia doesn't recognize any international legal rights, how can it call for international legal protection and other else? Because they said, oh, the group of refers to international law and other experience fear of financial destabilization. As for me, that is uh, some kind of uh, um, cynically thinking from them. Well, I think that uh, uh, Russia is simply uh, uh, acting in, in a manner that is disruptive of the international order. And the measures that I have uh, just discussed with you are logical measures to take in order to ensure compliance by Russia with the international order, to which it has committed itself to. Yes, and... Um... Uh, what is your stance? Uh, how will the Ukraine be able to use these funds for military needs or just for civilian needs? There are different options. I think uh, if uh, the recommendations that I have given that if uh, uh, Western authorities do give uh, Russia a deadline to comply with uh, the uh, international court's order to stop its invasion, uh, if Russia does not comply uh, with with that order uh, and by the deadline given by Western authorities, certain amounts, predetermined amounts on a daily basis should be confiscated and sent to Ukraine. And Ukraine should be able to send them, uh, to use them, sorry, uh, first to protect its territorial integrity and eventually to use in order to uh, rebuild after uh, the huge damage that Russia has caused uh, uh, with with its uh, uh, numerous uh, drone and rocket attacks on U Ukrainian civil infrastructure and uh, for the past two years and actually for now 10 years, if one counts the initial uh, invasion uh, uh, of Crimea and a uh, portion of eastern Ukraine. What is the black swan we really need to speed up these processes? 
Well, I think I think that the 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 the, uh, the, uh, the international community is already currently uh, uh, looking at solutions. We've heard statements from various leaders on how to do it. Uh, I think it takes uh, political will, uh, and uh, and and I think that uh, that will uh, hopefully will materialize. Uh, within the next uh, weeks, uh, uh, so that uh, there there could be uh, that those assets could be used uh, uh, properly. If, like I said, hopefully first to help Ukraine uh, uh, protect its territorial integrity, force Russia to stop uh, its invasion, and then uh, use to rebuild Ukraine uh, for the devastation that has been caused by Russia. Yes, in general, do you think that uh, sanctions imposed on Russia have been effective? It seems that this is a mechanism doesn't work at all. Imposing sanctions it has worked. Uh, I think that uh, very often what we see is uh, that certain uh, sanctions have unfortunately holes, uh, and and and, uh, and and those obviously need to be closed in order for sanctions to be more effective. But I would certainly say that sanctions have been effective. They have not been as effective as they could be if they they were more scrupulous, scrupulously uh, enforced by Western authorities. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about the holes, for example, for instance? What hole they use? Well, you you, you have you still have uh, 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 companies uh, that are that are, that are sending uh, uh, various uh, equipment to to Russia, and uh, and clearly uh, uh, those are are, are uh, sanctions. Those are actions that should be sanctioned uh, uh, in order for Russia not to be benefiting from any uh, supply from uh, Western countries while it's committing a genocide. Yes, unfortunately. I would like to ask you about the nationalization of Russian assets. Uh, there are cases uh, are numerous, but uh, not everyone is satisfied. For example, Mikhail Friedman is suing Ukraine over the nationalization of his bank. As international practice has shown, there are his changes of getting this former property bank. Uh, I, I would uh, need to to uh, uh, look at uh, the arguments, but I think that the, the actions that Ukraine uh, is doing, uh, Ukraine is using uh, uh, basically the tools that it has in order to fight uh, a genocide. When you're fighting a genocide and when the existence of the Ukrainian nation is at stake, you take every measure that's available in order to defend yourself. And I think that that is what Ukraine is doing. Uh, and, uh, and Ukraine uh, currently, as we have seen, uh, and uh, for the last two years, has been uh, the object of a vicious uh, attack with various genocidal acts that have been committed. 97% uh, of the uh, drone and rocket attacks have uh, been aimed at civil infrastructure. So Ukraine is taking what is uh, both in a military, technical, economic, legal uh, or, uh, tools that, that at its disposal in order to, to protect its territorial integrity. If we talk about the not uh, concrete businessmen, but businessmen from Russia who said, okay, I'm uh, have my own business. I am not in uh, part of aggression politics. Uh, what does his changes uh, to uh, sue to our country and back uh, his business, his money? Well, like I said, I think that each of those cases need to be uh, uh, scrutinized uh, by the Ukrainian courts, uh, and and I'm sure that Ukrainian courts. Uh, will address the, these issues I I in a manner that is compliant with international uh, norms. Yes, and another big case uh, that uh, tribunal in Hague has ordered Russia to pay 5 billion in compensation to Naftagas uh, 
for its losses and lost property in Crimea. This refers to the reimbursement of assets used to develop gas fields and other strategic important infrastructure of Ukraine, which became one of the main targets of aggression during the occupation of Ukraine Peninsula nine years ago. And uh, what are the changes that Ukraine will receive this compensation? Because uh, uh, their decision can be enforced in any country that is a subject to New York Convention. Well, correct. I mean, I think that as you've properly pointed out, uh, uh, it's one thing to obtain a favorable judgment uh, or, or order. Uh, and then the, the next step, uh, which is also a challenge, is to enforce it uh, by, by taking various measures. And there, there are uh, mechanisms which recognize uh, such such orders uh, and uh, Ukraine needs the, to avail itself and I'm sure it's doing it right now uh, of those mechanisms to find the assets and and to actually uh, seize and confiscate in, in virtue of of that uh, order. Uh, for the end, uh, if we talk about the reparation after the victory, uh, after the First World War, uh, not only German state assets were confiscated, but also all German private assets outside Germany. How should Ukraine make Russia to pay additional war repatriations? Well, I think that uh, uh, from my perspective, uh, uh, and I, I Glad that you said that once, because clearly Ukraine will be victorious. Uh, and uh, I think that the uh, current biggest challenge is uh, for Ukraine to get the support of the international community in order to achieve uh, that victory as quickly as possible, because that will have two important uh, consequences. One is that it will stop the devastation. Uh, in Ukraine, the killings uh, uh, of Ukrainian people, and that's the most important consequence that we all uh, want to attain. The second one uh, is uh, to ensure that there's fair reparation for uh, the uh, for the damage that has been caused. And I think the international community should uh, help Ukraine to ensure that Russia. Uh, complies with its obligations and and uh, uh, compensates Ukraine for all of the damages that have been uh, that have been caused. Uh, the international community will also have to uh, come up with something similar uh, as after the uh, the big uh, the, the, the the second world war. Uh, some form of a Marshall Plan that uh, that uh, will ensure that Ukraine can rebuild as quickly as possible, uh, and for Ukrainians to be uh, to be living normal lives. Yes, but uh, what if Russia breaks up in the several independent states? Who will be a successor on the Russian state in this case? Who will be uh, give us uh, repatriations? Well, I think that uh, it, 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 you're, you're, you're uh, bringing up a scenario that uh, one would have to analyze uh, and, and there are legal consequences that will follow depending on how uh, such split, if such split would occur uh, immediately after Ukraine's victory. Uh, and would one would have to analyze uh, and, and then to ensure that uh, proper reparation is done by the uh, the correct legal successor to uh, Russia's state. Uh, thanks a lot. That was a pleasure for me to talk with you, uh, and I uh, hope you join us next time.